and thanks for joining. In today's video, we're gonna do a review. I'm on a quest to find solutions to get the most out of multi-agent workflows. Autogen Studio is the web UI for the Autogen framework. And the framework is much larger than the web UI. It is clear that the Autogen Studio UI does plan to get a lot bigger. I don't know if there is a specific target to say that it has exact feature parity with the Autogen framework. Let me examine what I was planning on, on doing with Autogen Studio and where it might fit. Autogen Studio, it's not something that if you were to say, I have a website and I want a chatbot on my website, I would send them to Autogen Studio because they have a web UI with, that kind of looks like a chat interface. It's not that, right? It, it is really meant for a class of power users or, or developers to create something because whoever has access to Autogen Studio UI will have the, the, the ability to see what models, agents, and workflows that have been configured to exist within that environment. They'll have the ability to create those. It does appear that they're looking at building role-based access control, but I don't know the intent of those. And I don't think that this is really intended to be like a, a, a end user client. That's not the intent of Autogen Studio. Where, where I want to use it is I've got a number of coworkers in different functions. Some are more technical encoders, uh, some are, are not. Most of which, though, are not spending a bunch of time dabbling and, and, and bootstrapping these different AI frameworks. And so it may be useful for them to be able to have a, a, a UI-based client or maybe myself and some of my peers who are doing some focus in AI and LLM. We could build some powerful agent workflows that we could put into Autogen Studio UI and then package it up and make it available to my peers. And I actually think Autogen Studio has a lot of potential in that regard. The big challenge is that if you were to have a team of DevOps people that support a group of developers who might be experimenting with multi-agent workflows, or maybe you've got uh, IT ops people who are thinking about a power user interface. It's, it's com common for low-code solutions to be presented to business users. You might then repopulate workflows into that environment. Really good potential there. But right now, those ideas are still a little bit challenged. Autogen Studio is moving really fast, so hopefully it'll start to address some of the deltas that I, I think it really needs to be able to address for that to really be what I want it to be. There's many robust agent types that exist in Autogen Framework that aren't accessible in Autogen Studio. And yes, you could take the agent types that exist in Autogen Studio and develop around those, but it, it, then if you need to compare it with the Autogen Framework, I, I can add on self-learning classes, a uh, teaching class, effectively just adding an automated function that has a, a, a preset standard for how it does a retrieval augmented generation. We're going to need to evaluate agents and there's classes for that. There's just a lot of additional agent types and classes that exist in Autogen framework then appear to be accessible within Autogen Studio. Now, I could try to create more agents that work within the constraints of Autogen Studio right now, but that's, it's frustrating, right? If, if I have all this functionality that exists in the framework, and I can't use it on my agents for my client users, it's frustrating. And for me, it doesn't mean it's a no-go. You combine that with other bugginess that still exists, and that's not a criticism. It's a new project. Every new project is going to have some bugginess to overcome initially, and they're working through that, that pretty fast. Autogen has a lot of powerful strengths between some of the bugs and the capabilities that will probably be there pretty soon, it, it, it may be better to push the pause button or to start dabbling with the intent of knowing that you're dabbling. At this point, maybe work more with Autogen Framework at the code level for the time being with the hope that Autogen Studio does catch up. But right now for Autogen Studio, my feeling on it is like a, a, a pause button. It could be useful for me to expose to my peers with the standard default capabilities. Assuming that I didn't, put effort to it. This wouldn't be something that you, you would release as a mature service that you're committed to. But in the AI in particular, there's people who want to dabble with the latest AI tools. And so 
I want to potentially throw a lot of open source tools. The question is, do I want to hunker down and really put a lot of effort into Autoged Studio at this point? We already explored how to containerize it. We did deployment on Kubernetes for a, a dev pod type interface. And I talked about doing one for uh, an Ingress where a user could access it via web, but I just don't think it makes sense at this point. There's so many things that might go wrong. Whoever is running it should have access to uh, a, a terminal. So I think if you're going to expose it to an experimental class of users that should at least have the capability and the access level required to deploy it how I've shown uh, with the kind of dev pod approach with Kubernetes, I have the container running on Kubernetes, but I'm accessing the terminal by interactively connecting it to the pod's container. Now, the other important aspect is where does Autogen Studio and, and the larger Autogen framework fit into the future of multi-agent? I do think that standard approaches will emerge. Going back to earlier on, not long after the, the whole LLM boom started with GPT-3, as open source models were, were first starting to emerge, my team wanted to have an, a you know consistent API spec that they could write to, so that way they would have to deal with different plugins, different languages, to be in order to have different compatibility with different models. Now, all of the text-based models um, that are coming out, they all uh, support the standard open AI APIs, I can create client-side solutions and just swap out models on the back end without having to worry about integration headaches. That worked for your kind of traditional completion and chat completion endpoints. Now that we're starting to evolve towards agents, not even necessarily multi-agents, right? But even just agents. We've seen now OpenAI does have a standard for that, the assistance API. And my guess is that the future of multi-agent workflows will be something that's compatible with the assistance API. I think if multi-agent really has teeth, either OpenAI is going to directly offer guidance and solutions for that, or maybe there'll be something else like a spec for multi-agent communications. So another challenge that I see with the Autogen, it's not that it's not good, it's simple framework to get some raw multi-agent workflows and communications bootstrapped out, but it's not meaningful if I want agents to be able to communicate over a network. Like I have to instantiate all my agents into one common code base, one common microservice. If I need to, to have one agent communicate with another agent, what does it matter where that other agent is? It may make sense to have some subset of those communications classes optimized for a, a local communication flow. But ultimately, I think that the more important direction is being able to do multi-agent communications over network capability to where I can have multiple agents instantiated across the network and, and allow communications and have all the benefits of, of being able to segment those different code bases and have different teams that specialize in their different agents uh, and have that communication. But I, I do anticipate that the assistance API seems to have a, a stake in the ground. There's been millions of custom GPTs made and it's the big dog right now for how agents can be defined as the closest thing to the standard that we have. Maybe different standards will emerge. Maybe different power players will evolve to eclipse things. But my, my crystal ball indicates that assistance API is really important. And it's very orthogonal about how that might end up working with Autogen. Because one of the big challenges with Autogen is that it doesn't have clear guidance on how you would communicate with an agent. How does that happen? Like with the assistance API, it's middleware. The models don't natively provide the assistance API. There's several open source middleware solutions where if I want to take a Llama model and, and have it serve an assistance API, the model itself doesn't serve it, but I can put an open source middleware in between that'll allow me to serve agents designed around that assistance framework. So there's already multiple open source solutions that exist like that, which further that idea. If I'm developing that chatbot client for my website, and I used to call the chat completion API. Now we're starting to see people wanting to do that, but calling the assistance API. Again, furthering that idea that we'll have a middleware solution for AI software. And where does Autogen fit in that? It clearly can't be client side, agents that generate code. And we know that agents might generate 
insecure code or code that breaks things and melts things down. That's why Autogen introduced this really cool thing of allowing uh, agents that execute code to do it with a sidecar container. If they make code that screws things up, it won't tank the computer that it's running on. But you start thinking about on the client side, then you're not going to create a solution that would require your client side to be running a, a, a Docker interface. And Autogen doesn't have a, an API spec. Maybe because they're waiting for one to evolve. Maybe if the assistance API does more clearly emerge as the standard way that a client side chatbot interface would want to call some API to provide its backend, maybe Autogen could have that, right? But, you know, right now, it's it's very unclear, right? They have the GPT assistant agent, but all the work that the community is doing, all the work that the developers are doing is about creating agents within the Autogen framework directly and very little done with that GPT assistant agent from the community and the documentation aside from just it's there, we could, we could potentially use it. But my bet, if I had to place a bet on where the future is going, is that the assistance API is going to be a big part of the future and that developing agents that can use the assistance API within frameworks that are optimized for that, there's no safe bets to ensure that our effort and our time isn't derailed by something new that comes out tomorrow. That's the nature of the beast, but I'm still going to make the best estimation I can about where the future is going. Having focused earlier on some of the things I was developing to hope that open AI API spec would allow me to swap out models. And it did just as I had hoped. And now I can do that today. So my hope is that going forward, the assistance API has some continuity behind it. And so I'm going to park Autogen Studio for the time being. I'm going to, to be looking at some open source solutions that can implement the assistance API and allow us to develop code around OpenAI assistance that we could swap interchangeably with other open source models. And then I can just swap models out and my client side code remains the same. And then comes the question of what might OpenAI do to facilitate multi-agent communications between different agents in the assistance API. I have another video where I delve more about the future of where multi-agent is headed and, and what I'm going to be doing next and where I think the safest bets are. So thanks so much for uh, watching.